Spectrum wants me to upgrade. Hmm. That's what I thought was the fastest speed speed to an even faster speed. So I think it's that's one conspiracy theory I kind of am behind. Yeah. They want your money. That looks like we are live. Hello. Looks like we got a little bit of a drag lag on this, but uh, it looks like it's all the guts. So I'm here with Aaron Cliff of the Aaron Cliff Experiment. Hey, Ron. Great to um, be here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, I just found out about you not even like six months ago when a lot of people I know were following you on Instagram and so I had to investigate you know a lot of my friends were enjoying the music I was like okay I gotta, gotta find out about this guy and his, and his band and um, right off the back I gotta tell you the one and I told you this before, the castaway saga. When I saw the video that you guys did at Lost Fest, I was like, oh, this, this is really cool, you know, concept. Uh, uh, usually everybody does old, way older movies to do a concept. And you guys have a very original sound. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, well, uh, I think a lot of the the newer bands are trying to sound like bands that came before them. And I think you just try to be original. And that's really what we need <laughs> nowadays is more originality. Yeah, absolutely. I th Thank you, I really appreciate that. Um, now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I haven't gotten your CD yet. I'm going to want to, want to have that in my you know, my library so I can be able to go to it instead of going through YouTube. Mm -hmm. That seems to be right now my place where I go, you know, find new bands and explore them. The only one right now that seems to be not in trouble. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but tell, tell us a little bit about, you know, that went through. <laughs> Sorry, what? Uh, you, you cut out for a second. Okay. There. It's hard to hear. Yeah. You. Okay. Um, I was just saying, you know, just let uh, tell us a little bit about your band, you know, for people like such as myself and others that heard of you before or barely heard you. Yeah. So uh, my name is Aaron. I'm the vocalist and keyboardist for the Aaron Clift Experiment, and we're a progressive rock band based in Austin, Texas. And I like to tell people that we are the intersection between classic style, modern style. But if you enjoy bands like, um, you know, King Crimson or Rush or Porcupine Tree, those are just a few of our influences. But um, we really are all over the map with what we like to listen to and, and a lot of the styles that we cover. Yeah, I like I said before, you know, it's, I, I've noticed that it's like, you know, you have a you have a distinctive, very good voice. And uh, and your keyboard playing is really good. I mean it's melodic in places and then you you know, you have you have kind of like a nice little presence. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
And judging by the the reaction and the, you know that video with Las Fest that you know a lot of people are using. So, and when when did you start? Yeah, so actually this year celebrates our 10 year anniversary. So we put our first post on our website and social media on January 1st, 2012. So, uh, but I started writing the music for our, our debut album, Lonely Hills in 2008 and recorded a few demos in 2009. And that was before I knew that I wanted to make this like a full band project at the time. It was just kind of me and piano solo. And then I decided, all right, like I want to make these into actual rock songs. So I started investing in keyboard gear and put a band together. And the original lineup of the Aaron Cliff experiment, we released Lonely Hills in June, 2012. And since then we've released two other albums and we're currently working on a fourth album. So yeah, it's been 10 years. It feels like 10 years ago on, on the one hand, it feels like it was kind of forever ago, but on the other hand, like I, I feel like some of it was last week. Right. Right. <clears throat> well, it, you know, like they say, time flies. <laughs> yeah. And this whole pandemic's like distorting my sense of time. I was t telling you before we started, I feel like we're in the 25th month of 2020 at this point. Yeah, it um, obviously for musicians, it's really thrown thrown you guys for a loop. You know, it's like uh, you can't you can't go out and play live. Oh, at the beginning, you know, in twenty twenty and most of twenty twenty one, I know there's some some bands in late twenty twenty one that started playing and then. It's just not like it was. The only thing that's predictable right now is how unpredictable things can be. And it's like, I tell people, just be flexible with your plans because anything could change at any moment. And we've been, uh, I remember in 2020, it's funny, we auditioned our, uh, I call him our new guitarist, but at this point, uh, Anthony's been with the group since February, 2020, but he auditioned for us in early 2020. And I remember this was right before everything shut down. And we said, okay, Anthony, um, after South by Southwest is over in Austin, we'll, uh, we'll start rehearsing regularly and, you know, we'll get ready to play some shows and then everything shut down and it became uh, a virtual collaboration. So, uh, you know, I start. I was writing some songs for. Uh, so we released our last album, "If All Goes Wrong," in 2018. That was our third album. And after that was over, um, we had we had some lineup changes, and we uh, we started rehearsing some new material, but we hadn't really done a whole lot with it. And I still needed to write quite a few new songs. And so when everything shut down. Then I just started uh, getting to work, writing everything using, um, so I use a lot of um, a lot of software technology for all my keyboard sounds. Uh, and I use Ableton Live for my um, digital audio workstation. And so I've been using it for a lot of live performing. Uh, I hadn't really gotten super heavy into the recording and demo capabilities of the software, but now I had a, a, re, a reason to do that. So I started putting together some virtual arrangements of new songs. And sometimes I'd have like a, you know, a drum loop or uh, bass parts that I'd play on the, on the keyboard and, and put them together. And I'd send that to my bandmates and say, all right, and here's the chord chart. Here's like a little demo of me doing this song, um, see if you can add in your parts. And so everybody would, would record their parts separately. And then um, Cliff, our bassist, who is, is pretty good with audio engineering. So he was taking all our tracks on Google Drive and putting them together. And then we'd have a demo recording. We'd 
sit around on a virtual on like a zoom chat like we're doing right now right. we'd we'd play it and we'd like go through sections and kind of talk about it and and uh what we wanted to change about the parts and we did that for about about 12 months 12 13 months uh until uh till uh, like about august last year and that was when we started to uh rehearse again in person and that's what we've been doing since then but it's oh. really interesting like how the technology kind of saved us from not being able to do anything exactly yeah i think had had this and you know how my girlfriend had this mm -hmm. pandemic happen 10 or let's say even 20 years still in the new century it happened in 2020 uh 2000 you know when the supposed the Y2K thing was supposed mm -hmm. to happen. If the pandemic happened back then, I think it would have got all the music down completely. Yeah. Or, or you go like, you record your part and you send out a CD of it to mm -hmm. them and then they would add people, they would, how they did it back then. And it's like, so. Yeah, and. Technology's on your side. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny too, because uh, I had been kind of moving in this direction already. Like, so when we did previous Aaron Clift experiment albums, um, we kind of, I, I always approached it with the philosophy of like, okay, I'm going to play my part and this is going to be what I play live. And so if I play this part, I need to be able to perform it live as well. I know, um, there's a couple bands that have done stuff like that. I know Rush did that for a long time on their albums. Like you listen to how they record some of their like early eighties tracks and Getty will be playing like a keyboard part and he won't be playing bass at the same time. Or if he is, then he's probably using foot pedals, but it was always very much what, what you hear is what you get. And I kind of operated under that for a long time, but that's not really how I hear music in my head. You know, I, I come from a classical background and I, I used to, uh, I used to perform. Uh, my first instrument was viola and I sang in choirs for years, like, and I wrote orchestral pieces. So I always heard like lots of different instruments and that's how I was hearing a lot of these new songs is like different layers of sounds. So I said, well, what would happen if I just recorded how I hear it in my head. So uh, a lot of these new songs now have more keyboard parts going on than I can physically play at, at once. Uh, but one of the things I did during the pandemic was I learned how to do uh, backing tracks in Ableton. So like I can have some of the more atmospheric keyboard parts that, that still add to the texture, but maybe you're not like super important to play. Uh, but I can synchronize them with my actual playing. And to me, that gave the, the new songs a lot more, uh, a lot more layers to the sound and a lot more interest in what I wanted to hear. So uh, in this case, the, the circumstances of the pandemic, I, I learned to kind of take that and, and work with it instead of against it. There's, there's um, I've seen I want to say almost a 50 50 thing of people uh, using the pandemic to their advantage. You know, you say learning to do new things, and others are just kind of put everything on the shelf, waiting, and hide it out. Mm -hmm. You know, get back to their, their normal, of, you know, recording music. So it's like, you know, you get a lot. I really think that this year, 2022, will be probably one of the biggest release amount, amounts of releases this year than previous years because everybody's doing things from their, you know, remotely. And since they can't go touring, they got all that time, so they can do more. So it's like it's, if someone normally does enough music to fit one album, you know, I've seen several bands out there that have to do two albums. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Double. absolutely. I mean, one band in particular that is more on the metal side is Master. They did that that double album. You know. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, the Hushed and Grim is really long. Yeah. Too. And I was like going, that I don't think that kind of an album would have come out if there wasn't a pandemic. You're hearing, it's like people are being a little bit, you know, since they got more time on you know, they can do more music. I just think there's going to be a lot a lot of releases more than we've seen in the past. I know. I, I had hoped that we were going to release our uh, fourth album last year. We just kind of got delayed. And the other thing, too, was uh, we have, we've had some uh, lineup changes. We announced uh, earlier this month that uh, Anthony, as I mentioned, he had been with us since uh, February 2020, but we never we never had the ability to get together as a band and do a, a proper photo shoot until uh, till this past year. Uh, once we all were vaccinated and things kind of opened up again, uh, we also have uh, a new drummer who joined us, uh, Pablo, and uh, so. He's he's officially joined us uh, this year, and uh, yeah, it's it's been great working with with them. And Cliff Cliff has been with us since 2019, but uh, yeah, I I really like the the d dynamic that we have right now. I think it's it's really good, and I can't wait for people to hear how the new music's gonna sound. Oh yeah, yeah. I, you know, for some reason, I I liked the the lineup format guys have you know, where you don't have dedicated front man it's, sometimes when you see you have a dedicated front man and then when the band goes into instrumental parts of a song you know you kind of like you know you kind of feel bad for sometimes for the for a lead vocalist because it's like mm, what am I gonna do now? you know so it's like at least with your your lineup, you know, when you're not singing, you're playing. Mm -hmm. I I kind of like that, and and it seems to be nowadays a very I think a very popular, you know, four piece, very popular. What this is it? Then you get the the big. big Big bands that have like two guitarists, you know, two keyboards, backup singers. Kind of gets a little crowded up on the stage. Yeah, there's there's a certain practicality to what we do, um, but also I feel like the technology has come along to the point now where. Um, I'm I'm doing everything with a single keyboard. I I have a lot of friends who play keyboards, and I I've seen with the with the old analog gear that you have to have like rows and rows of keyboards. Um, I keep it with a single keyboard because I'm using 100% uh, software for all my sounds. But so I've got I've got my MacBook Pro that's running. Uh, I use Complete by Native Instruments for all my sounds, and then a couple other effects from from Ableton. But uh, it's been a really great combination. I can get pretty much any sound you can think of. Uh, all the sounds from the last two albums are, are from all that software. That's cool. You know, it's and it's a lot easier for you to get your gear up, set it up, <laughs> go. Yeah. You know? Yeah, my back thanks me very much for that. <laughs> Not having to lift uh, hundreds of pounds of stuff. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's nice, kind of visually. It's nice to see the big rig that people have. Then practically, like you, said, you know, it's, a, it's a, you know, unless they unless they are they can afford roadies to do all of that. Oh yeah. Part of it for me is a visual thing too, because I consider myself a, a vocalist 
first and foremost. You know, the keyboard is what I use to arrange music and help me come up with ideas, but um, vocals are what I consider to be my, my primary instrument. And I didn't want to have a humongous setup kind of blocking my body or taking up all this room on, on the stage uh, and sort of detracting from that part of the show. You know, that's the amazing thing with technology. It seems like everything, is, some things are going smaller, you know. Well, you, you don't really need, you know, maybe one day this is going to be the, the size of your, your keyboard, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the the one the keyboard that I do have is is uh it's on my desk right here in front of me. It's uh I could lift it with one hand. It's it's amazing. It's just uh, uh, the idea of having all that software right in one area. You know, you can create the classic sounds, you know, keyboard sounds, and then or futuristic sounds and that's like I, I I find that honestly that's amazing. The, and I love watching musicians, you know, they they I've had I've I've known a few uh, bands that I've sat in the studio and watched them do their music. They were heavy metal bands who uh, are band. I'm at complete awe, and I understand, you know, you guys, you know, standpoint that uh, it, it takes, you know, to create, it's some, some audience, you know, fans out there are a little impatient. They want their bands to put out an album a year or mm -hmm. every 10 months or something like that, you know, and, me, you know, when I sat into the studios and I was, you know, get that behind the scenes work. Things just don't pop out. You know, that's what I like about progressive rock is, you know, you guys create such wonderful music and you can tell that it's, it's coming from the heart. Uh, whereas, you know, I, you know, it's in a lot of the modern pop music seems to be changing. Someone just programmed it in and it just got some singer to, you know, to sing the song. And it's not here. It's very controlled. Feeling. It's very refreshing to the band such as, you know, it, Absolutely. Yeah, I was watching. Um, I'm subscribed to like a million YouTube channels. I probably have like 60 different YouTube channels, and a good portion of, of my channels are, are um, music education channels. And one of the channels that I subscribed to was doing an in-depth look at the Depeche Mode song, uh, Enjoy the Silence. And it was just kind of talking about the history of it. And, and uh, the guy who was going through it had the stem tracks. So he had like all the, all the isolated like vocals and you know, all the different keyboard elements. And one of the things he was praising about the song and I was thinking about that is like, he said, a lot of song, a lot of music is either 100% like organic feel or it's 100% like synthesized kind of feel. And one of the things he liked about the song, and I actually agree with him, is that it's a mixture of both. You've got the organic feel. Uh, you know, these guys were all like, yeah, they probably programmed a lot of the synthesizer stuff, but they're also playing the instruments and they're they're picking out these songs and there is a like an organic feel to some of that that music and uh, that's what i really like about a lot of progressive rock is how it 
combines those uh, those different elements into something really unique. Yeah, I, I like those uh, the channels that they analyze the song and then you, from, you know, whether you're a musician or a fan, it's really interesting to to get history of the song and then the person talks about it. You know, you know, you always hear it from your point of view. Now you're getting a different point of view. And if it's something they they say something about the song that you know give you some trivia about it, you like oh yeah, I thought of it that. So it's like it's it's part of the education. You know, I think progressive rock fans, I think, always educating themselves. And then you know, progressive rock bands are always educating themselves, bettering, you know, their craft. Yeah, I've, de I've definitely noticed that. Um, you mentioned Rossfest earlier. When we performed at, um, at Rossfest in 2017, and I went to the festival in 2016 as a as an audience member. I did watch a fair few of the bands in 2017 as well, but um, one of the things I liked about that festival was getting a chance to not only meet the bands, but meet the fans. And yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, progressive rock fans uh, are some of the most musically and just in general educated people I know. And uh, it's fun to nerd out about this stuff, you know, like I, I'm, I'm a music nerd. I love trivia. I love facts about these kinds of things. And, uh, it's, it's cool to talk to, uh, other people who kind of share that passion and love for the music and the craft. Yeah. I went to, uh, Crossfest 2012 and, uh, back with that, you know, you got the, Almost all the progressive rock festivals I've been to since 1993 have had that feeling where, you know, the, you get to talk to other fans, then fans are no, you know, I noticed that this on these, uh, especially in the nowadays, it's been in the past where the bands are way up on these pedestals, and then you're right down here, and you're common folk and they're the kings and queens and um but modern progressive rock bands from the 90s up they come in they mingle and you know of course you get your cds out and have them or records you have them sign them you know and it's like but you get to you get to talk to them like like they're friends you know, like you're, you've known them for years. And I had one time I think it was out in Los Angeles, Progress in 1997, uh, John Wetton Band, and the keyboardist was uh, the keyboardist from a band called IQ. And Saturday night from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Just talking like, you know, had a nice conversation. It's like, it's that it, there's this special bond mm -hmm. progressive rock fans and bands have. That's what Absolutely. makes going, and that's what makes going to those festivals even more fun because mm -hmm. you're going to see the bands live, but then there's a very good chance you can. For me, that's so key. I think, um, you know, progressive rock is a niche genre, but the fans are very passionate about this stuff. And, and the community is a big part of why I love doing what I'm doing. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's fun. I always, every time I go to a, a show or uh, we put on a show, I get a chance to talk to people before and afterwards. And Man, we just we just get to chatting and and uh, sharing music tastes. Uh, that's and that's how I got into a lot of the bands that I love and respect is um, through friends. So 
it's uh, it's all about like that discovery and that community aspect that I really love. Yeah, I'm I'm sure you you've experienced too that probably uh, learned more. Uh, you got new bands in your <laughs> library because of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, it's funny you mentioned that. So in, I was thinking a couple of years ago about, okay, I, you know, you mentioned Instagram, we found each other that way. Uh, my wife is, is a food photographer and she's always posting on, on Instagram and she had been encouraging me to get more actively involved in kind of the, the visual side of, of, um, but just, you know, more involved in social media in general. And I started thinking about, okay, what's, what's a way that I can engage with the fans and, you know, in a way that feels natural and could lead to some interesting conversations. So I started thinking about some of the experiences that I had had, like at Ross Fest and at concerts. And one of the things we always talked a lot about are you know, concert stories, um, talking about like albums and artists that inspired us. So I started a series now every, every Friday, I talk about a favorite album of mine, really any genre, but, uh, you no know, focused in, in on either something that I maybe discovered when I was younger or something more recent. And then every Sunday I'll talk about a uh, song that I'm really into. So uh, last month and this month, I've been doing every week talking about favorite songs and albums of 2021, because uh, as you mentioned, with all the music that's been coming out, I got introduced to so much new music last year that like in past years, I've usually had only, I've been able to get through my, my whole list in one month, but I was like, there's too many things I want to talk about. So I did an entire month this month for like my kind of my honorable honorable mentions list. But yeah, basically, I think I ended up having like, you know, 12 or 16 entries, or I'm just talking about all these albums that are great. But, uh, you know, I always open up to the fans and say, Hey, uh, did you hear this album? What did you think about it? Or what are some albums you got into? And then that in turn, like, you know, fans recommend stuff to me that I had never heard of. And I listen to that album, that music, and then it ends up in inspiring me for stuff. Um, you know, I had discovered my, my favorite album of last year was uh, Aphelion by Leprous. And I kind of got into that band by accident through another band that I liked. I, I saw uh, Bent Knee in 2018. Um, I had discovered them from Rossfest. So I went and saw them in Austin. And then the band that went on after them was Leprous. And I was so blown away by the performance. I started getting into their music. And then a couple of people who are fans were like, Hey, did you know Leprous has a new album coming out this year? So then I listened to it and I was just blown away by it again. So, uh, you know, it's, it's great to be involved with a community of people that are so awesome that have such wide ranging tastes that we can kind of just keep discovering new stuff off each other. A majority, I'll tell you a majority of the stuff on my wall, except for the Genesis of Queen and the Bruford one, those are all that I got in 2020, 2021. And then I got a stack of about 20 CDs back there because I can't do shelves that I got. In the eight, 20, 20, 20. Actually, no, no, these were 20. I think it's about 20 or 25. Like, I got to get another shot. <laughs> that was always the dilemma I had when I was a teenager. I was like, okay, I'm going on a, uh, I was in debate in, in high school and I used to go to tournaments. And uh, that was always the dilemma. It's like, okay, my, my CD booklet can only fit like, you know, 20. 20 CDs and all these sleeves, but I have like, you know, a hundred albums, which one, which 20 am I going to bring with me? Right. <laughs> Those, uh, I had, a, I had a friend in high school. He was one of the people who kind of got me into progressive rock. He was into, he, <laughs> he had some very strange tastes cause he liked 
on the one hand, he liked the Eagles. He liked Meatloaf and Pink Floyd. And they're like, okay, that's all like 70s stuff. And then he liked Insane Clown Posse and Eminem. <laughs> so, so we were like listening to like Insane Clown Posse and Eminem albums. And then, and then he's like, oh, you got to check this out. The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. So I listened to that. And that was kind of my, my uh, descent into uh, progressive rock. And here I am like 20 something years later, I'm still into this stuff. Yeah, and you, you go deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like, and, um, you know, I got, you know, you get bands, not only like modern bands, but, you you know, the older 70s bands that either you never heard of or, 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 why I, I had so many of them that I'm getting. Right here. Mm-hmm. Budgie, Budgie, you know, it's like I, I only knew of Budgie because, you know, Metallica covered two of their songs. Right. Actually, I think, yeah, two of their songs. Mm-hmm. So um, I only knew about that. And then a friend of mine on Facebook of course, said, you know, you need to get some albums. So I got this album. And, you know, then you hear other albums people are talking. Um, you know, like uh, into like jazz fusion. Like I'm, I've just not even on that. I think I got maybe three or four. I think about a half a dozen uh, uh, CDs of that genre. I haven't even talked about it. And then I said to people, I haven't heard about this. And they're they're like shocked. You know, you're, you're our age. You should have known. I said, hmm. I didn't, you know, unfortunate with me is music wasn't important until uh, the 90s. First Prague Festival in hmm. 1993. Before then, it was, it was important, but it was not like, you know, like, I Something with progressive rock is much, you know, completely. And, you know, I just, after that, it's like, you know, this is the music. This is, I think the music that all my life up until that point, I was looking for, that I needed something that it, it, it spoke to me. So, you know, it's like, after that, it's like going down the rabbit hole. People tell me this band, that band. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You know, it's like, you know, I'll get to it. You know, it's like I've got so much, you know, to work with. So I'll get to it eventually. It's like, but I don't think with all the bands out there, you know, no way. You'll get a, a good portion of it. You know, I'll try to stay as much as possible. With bands. So, so. And you know, discovering you that you, you know, what it's like I'm a, you know, it's like how many more bands out there that I haven't heard of that you know I need to hear. You know, it's like I, I really think that your band is is one of them is an, an important band. That more people need to know about. Like I, I said, are very original sound. No, oh, thank you. You know, you don't sound. You're not a, a Genesis clone. Not a Yes clone. Not a King Crimson clone. You know, and when you get a little on the, the heavier guitar side, you're not getting into Dream mm-hmm. Theater area or rush area you know you're not getting you know you're not but then at the same time all that is in you you know yeah i was like that's you know that's basically that's what i liked i want you know i i really liked when bands that call themselves progressive rock progressive you know that you know they're doing something new they're not 
resting on <clears throat> bands before them, you know, their laurels, you know, like, okay, you know, I can do that. You know, that keyboard, you know, Genesis. Okay. Love that, love that, but, you know, I think it's even more important to have a, an Aaron Cliff keyboard, you know, you know. Yeah. I'm always That's, looking for, yeah, I'm always looking for new ways to do things because it's, uh, yeah, I, I think there are certain comfort zones we could easily fall back into. Um, for me, there, there is, there have been kind of certain ways that I've written songs, but I'm, I'm increasingly like trying to push myself to try different ways of approaching the task of, of writing something. So like, to give you an example, um, sometimes I'll start off, I'll have a title of a song and that's the only thing I have is like, oh, that, that would be a cool title for a song. Okay, right. what about it, right? So then I'll just kind of like go down uh, that avenue of exploration. Okay, what is what does this mean? Like, you know, start coming up and so then the, like, the lyrics kind of push it a certain way and then maybe I'll try phrasing that title a couple ways. So that's one way I could do it. Another way is don't come in with any agenda about like this song is about this, it's about that. Um, sometimes I'll just go through my uh, collection of sounds with complete and I'll, I'll explore like a new module that I haven't worked with before. Um, like I bought a, the new version of it at the end of 2019 and started playing around with like all these modules I hadn't even heard of, of before. And some of them are like super experimental sounds and you can combine them and do all this stuff. And, and like, just sometimes the, the process of like exploring something can, can turn into uh, a whole song. We, uh, it's funny, one of the songs that I wrote um, for our fourth album, like I was trying to come up with a certain rhythm and I think I got it wrong. Like I was count, I was counting it incorrectly. Uh, like I was, I was thinking of it in one rhythm, and then when I listened back to it, like the programming I did was incorrect. But I liked that that cross rhythm between what you know what the drums were playing versus what this the sound was doing. And I was like, I'm gonna keep that. And then that became like the basis for a song. So it was like it was just kind of a happy accident. But I always think about like. You, know, you if you ever go to an improv comedy show or or you talk to people who do improv comedy, they always tell you yes and. So uh, somebody proposes an idea instead of shutting it down, you say yes and like, okay, I'm gonna take that idea, I'm gonna build off of it. So even right. even if the idea seems kind of dumb or out there, like let's just see where this goes, right? And uh, you know, I get a lot of crap that way, but honestly, like it, it was. Uh, it was great to try that out. Um, I think that's part of why I call this band the Aaron Cliff to experiment because I'm always thinking about like, how can we experiment with sound? Um, but I wouldn't say that like our music is like, some of our music's a little bit out there, but I, I, liked, I like music that is, um, I like music that's adventurous, but I also like music that is, um, I don't want to say easily digestible necessarily, but like something that that is uh, something that maybe you know an educated person could understand without like having to overexert themselves or right. you know push themselves really hard. Um, but like you know, that's kind of why I like the Beatles and and the Police and and a lot of the progressive rock bands because they do have they do have those hooks, they do have those melodies, but you dig in a little deeper to it and you're like, wow, this is just, it's amazing how they do that stuff. And that's the kind of energy and, and uh, exploration that I want to put into our music too. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's like, I noticed with some bands that are on the heavier side, um, <clears throat> guitarist tends to go noodles too much. And it's showing off, yes, your talent is showing it off, but is it fitting with the music? You know, it's like, and whereas with your band, it, it has the 
melodic feel to it. Impressive, but it's on the melodic side. And you, feel com- you know, you kind of feel comfortable. Music. You, know, you don't want to be agitated. You know, yeah. sometimes. I mean, there's some times where you need to have that kind of music, you know, where you need to have that aggressiveness, you know, and, you know, angular playing and stuff like that. But then there's, but most of the time for me, I just like the, you know, melodies, something that uh, I can remember, but then also something each time I listen to, something solid. Mm-hmm. Where it's like it's not it's not giving you the whole story, the whole you know story front to end. Uh, the first time you listen to it, you know you're getting the bulk of the story, but then you go back and you listen, especially concept. I mean, there's there's some real tricky ones out there, but then there's some really cool. That's cool, you know. I got it, you know. It took me a while to think about it. But not too long. You know, mm-hmm. I think if you think about it too long, then it it takes. I think there needs to be, you know, like a good balance between that the maybe the simplicity or the complexity, or maybe like you could call it accessibility and the complexity side. Uh, I'm a little bit biased because I'm a vocalist, but I think a lot of a lot of the bands that I really really like are ones that have just an incredible vocal talent at the front, uh, who often is probably their songwriter. I mean, like I mentioned, um, Leprous was a big one for me recently. uh, And uh, Einar Soldberg, I know he writes most of the music with the band. I know they, all all the guys in the band are just amazing musicians and I've I've seen them live, uh, going to see them live in in March. I'm super excited about that, but, you know, groups like that. Um, I got my start before I was even into progressive rock. I was into like all the the grunge bands, so like Soundgarden, right. Alice in Chains, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Stone Temple Pilots, Smashing Pumpkins. Like all the all those bands are just absolutely incredible uh, vocalists. Just like all their songs are, they're accessible. They're very immediate. Like you get a real emotional impact, but then you go back yeah. and listen to them and you're like, wow, just like the, the craftsmanship and the, the musicianship behind them is like, you know, amazing. And it's funny, like grunge kind of became my gateway into a lot of different styles of music because I remember, uh, I was so obsessed with it. I was like sharing it with anybody who would listen. Uh, and I knew my dad, liked a lot of, of music. So I, I shared it with my dad and he listened to Soundgarden. He's like, oh yeah, that reminds me of Black Sabbath. So he put on Master of Reality for me on the turntable. I listened to it and I was like, yeah, that that sound. And then yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we listened to Alice in Chains. He's like, you know, those vocal harmonies remind me of Crosby, Stills and Nash. So he puts on their first album and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and he had um, Aqualung and um, what else did he have? Uh, Tarkus by ELP. So that was that was my other introduction to progressive rock. And you know, at the time, like I didn't know what any of these genres were called. I was just like, oh. it's all it's all just like classic rock music to me. Like we we're listening to Elton John, uh, Madman Across the Water, and I'm hearing all the orchestra stuff in there. And like, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. You can put an orchestra in a, in a rock song. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you know, it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't until recently, like in the, you know, since starting up uh, doing these Zoom things that I realized that going back to 1980, on my birthday, a friend of mine gave me Rush Permanent Waves, and it was just released in January of that that year, and my yeah. birthday was in April, and I had no idea why this my friend was giving me this because I never I heard of them. But uh, me growing up, I I was the short hair guy, and everywhere else had the long hair. So I was like, you know, hear this band. And so, you know, I've seen pictures of them, long hair. It's like, oh, these guys are scary. 
<laughs> but then I put it on and I liked it. And then I think that was the beginning, you know, and then it led to me getting Essex Yes, the little compilation they put out, and Queen's Greatest Hits, and the first ELP cassette. And then, and then in 1985, and Marillion put out that song, Kaylee. Got into that. That's you know, so a great one. Like, yeah. I mean, I got into that, and then all of a sudden, my friend who was into the thrash got me into that. And all of a sudden, I just basically everything that came before that it was it was almost like it was right from my memory. I was just focused right on these kind of, this kind of style for the longest time, for about four or five years, and it's like it wasn't until when I, I looked at it. Owner, he, uh, his uh, manager friend put on King Crimson Red. All of a sudden, it was like I had a light bulb moment. You know, uh, I kind of like uh, kind of called it like my musical epiphany. And uh, so it's like from then on, it's like my music taste completely changed, and I was more open. To Minded to things, and I'm listening now. 2022 stuff that I probably should have listened back in late 70s, early 80s. I never got around. You know, there's just so much. I know it's crazy. You know, um, your story reminds me a lot about like kind of the rehearsals we have in in band because you know I'm I'm coming from. I'm coming from the world of like, you know, I grew up in the nineties. I listened to all these, all this stuff kind of, uh, forward, but then I also had my parents' generation. I had their stuff that I was listening to. So, uh, you know, we're kind of a multi-generational band, uh, Anthony and, uh, Pablo are guitarist and drummer respectively. They're in, uh, they're, uh, few years younger than I am. And then uh, Cliff, our bassist is a few years older than me, but we all, uh, we all share a love of um, you know, several, several bands, you know, all of us love King Crimson and, and Rush and, and, uh, you know, the police and a lot of these bands, but like, all of us kind of grew up in slightly different times. So we all have slightly different reference points. Uh, you know, Cliff grew up with a lot of the the uh, 80s and 90s stuff and um so he he's coming from like uh, metallica and and uh anthrax and and uh, iron maiden like you know yeah. a lot of a lot of those groups that were of that era and i listen to that stuff but i'm not as familiar with a lot of it as as he is and so you know he he reminds me of some of these things and then um you know anthony is uh he he went to berkeley college of music and he studied uh songwriting and he he listens to a lot of um he likes a lot of jazz fusion stuff so like he's telling me about a lot a lot of pat metheny and uh i love pat metheny stuff too but i started listening more uh to you know different different guys uh like that and then uh pablo comes from from a jazz background as well so like you know he he studied with um chad wackerman who worked with frank zappa so you know we were <laughs> we were having a big discussion the other day about uh chad wackerman's work with alan holdsworth and it's like you know but all these different musical worlds you know with right. when, when you're when you're in that community and when you're with with a group of of people who are all like you you admire them uh and you start to absorb kind of their their um music as well it it in turn kind of enriches your own life and uh i like your story about discovering uh permanent waves and kind of that being your your introduction to this this whole big world of stuff yeah like you were saying earlier i didn't know at that time it was progressive rock i just thought it was more interesting Mm -hmm. you know it's yeah like, exactly it's like it was like okay you know here this these guys are doing something a little more uh intricate sounds i mean it's it has 
you know, the accessibility in a way, but they're just taking it one step further. And it's like, that's what, that's what the, the whole, the whole progressive rock genre. I love when bands take things a little further, you know, do something, you know, take a chance on the sound, you know. Mm -hmm. I liked what you, you mentioned Marillion earlier. They were like, you know, I, I think of a couple um, points in my musical, like education, you know, like, oh, I remember where I was when I discovered, you know, such and such band. I remember I was uh, 18 and hearing Marillion for the first time, I think that I got Brave, their 1994 album Brave, and then I got, um, I got like one of their greatest hits things. And then I started digging into their, their eighties material, uh, with, I started with, um, misplaced childhood and clutching at straws. And then I got the first two albums. And for me, it was like, you know, I had heard a bunch of progressive rock up to, up to that point, And I really love the genre and, and there's a certain, um, sound i guess to a lot of the the classical stuff even though you know there's there's a big variety within that but one thing that was different for me about hearing marillion was how um just how raw like the emotions and how personal the the music felt like with the lyrics um because i had listened i'd grown up listening to like grunge and a lot of 90s stuff and that was kind of like the the aesthetic was like you know keeping it keeping it real, keeping it authentic. And that that appealed to me about Marillion's music. There was just something very like personal, personal. Um, but you know, still with the with the intricacy of of the progressive rock style, but like that that additional kind of like emotional element to me, uh, that was a huge inspiration for me with with how I wanted to approach my own songwriting. And and I think I still still think about that a lot when I do uh, songs that um, it's always really important to me when I write the lyrics that I want, I want it to mean something and I want it to be something that other people can understand what it means. Maybe it can mean something personal to them, but I want, I want somebody to get like that feeling from, from music. I know there's some some bands have a maybe more like um, abstract approach to lyrics or it's like maybe whatever, uh, not as clear, but like I always want to have that that kind of like clear message with the lyrics too. You don't want to get it, get the, how do you say, get their brain wound up too, too much. You know, you want to, want to give them a story that's, Simple yet complex, you know. Mm -hmm. that, you know, so you don't want it just like once about a time the end. You know, you don't want <laughs> right? That. Yeah. You know, you want you want to take them on a little journey, and that's what, that's what I like about you know the genre is that you know you can go on different journeys. You can go to different whether it's a fantasy place or something personal. You know, like this place, childhood. You know, personal nature or you you got fantasy or, you know, some modern uh, mm -hmm. thing happening. You know, it's like, you want to go, it's like, it's an adventure. You know? Yeah. Especially, especially when, especially when the band does a concept album. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Adventure. Uh, I'm, I'm really into uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I started, <laughs> it's funny. I had played, uh, I was really into, you know, f fantasy novels and read Lord of the Rings when I was a kid, uh, played D&D &D when I was a teenager, kind of got away from that for a while. And then uh, in early 2020, when everything shut down, a bunch of my music friends, including a few uh, former members of the Aaron Clift experiment, got in touch with me. With me. Uh, I remember uh, Devin, our former bassist, um, contacted me he's like hey would you be interested in playing D, &D online with with us we got a <laughs> we got a group and you think you'd you'd be fun and uh so i started getting into that and uh lately i've been uh, after things reopened we, our group kind of like you know we we ended our campaign but um 
I wanted to continue. So now I'm, now I'm writing my own stuff. And it, it's funny, it kind of brings me full circle. Cause before I was, before I was writing music, I was writing stories and I always wanted to be a writer. Um, I was writing poems and stories when I was a kid. And uh, yeah, for me, music is just, it's all about writing a story. And, and uh, even if the songs don't have like, you know, characters per se, I always think of like, what is the, what is the character? What is this song's character? Like who, who would be singing this? Like what kind of, uh, you know, what would the person be if they were in a movie, right? Right. Are they, you know, what is their profession or what is their, what is their angle? Right. So I, I, I thought about that a lot when I was writing the, um, when I was writing the songs for the new album and, uh, we're hoping to release that later this year, we're, we're kind of arranging the songs right now and hopefully recording them soon. But, um, I thought about that a lot because a lot of the, um, a lot of the lyrics were inspired by things that I was going through, either just like dealing with like this, the world just kind of falling apart in front of me, right. <laughs> uh, no political events going on, but like kind of taking that all in and thinking about, oh, like, you know, imagining either myself as a character in the middle of like one of these things, or just imagining like, you know, trying to get the feeling of like, you know, what, where, how was I feeling when this thing happened? Right. And how can I, how can I convey that into a song lyric, you know, that, that can relate to other people. So, uh, yes. yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, the, all this is really about telling a story. You know, it, it just, it, like you said, the world just, all of a sudden, just, it just came to us, you know, and, and everything that we knew, it, in, in some weird way for me personally, it feels like everything that we knew was thrown into a blender, all jumbled up, not, you know, and it's like, it's like, it's like normally we'd want to get out of this on the other side, you know, in one piece, but it seems like it wasn't happening in that way. And I'm like, boy, oh my God, you know, people, you know, it's, it's, it's really basic. Like we need to come out of this. We need to get, we need to, you know, not to get into this, but we need to get this virus in our rear view mirror. It needs to be out of our lives. It needs to stop affecting the world. Um, you know, affecting the musicians, people day to day, you know, their social life. If they have, you know, because it, we need, need to get back to what I think we also need to learn. You know, I think it's a big learning experience, you know, and maybe in music, especially in the progressive rock genre, we're going to hear songs that are going to, you know, maybe teach us in a certain way you know, as to, you know, how you dealt with it, you know, how Aaron dealt with it or, you know, mm -hmm. any other bit, you know, you know, band out there. How did they they deal with it? You know, obviously we all, all it affected us all at once. But how did it? Yeah, there was. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the the band uh, Ginger before. Uh, the, you, I heard. You, uh, I heard yeah. one of their songs. I mean, I saw one of the reaction videos for it where. She mm -hmm. has this very melodic voice, and all of a sudden, it just like you know, the Antichrist came out. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm like, oh, I was like, so shocked. I'm like, oh. I know, and, and and she's such, you know, not saying anything wrong, but it's like she's such a, you know, Tatiana's it, a she's a beast, man. I, she she and can. I, I was like going, can... I was like going, oh my god, you know, it's like. I only thought guys could make that that mm -hmm. you know antichrist 
found, you know, but it's like it, but it scary, it scared me, but then also, yeah, you know, yeah, that was, um, so Ginger, yeah, the Ukraine, they're a Ukrainian, uh, an extreme metal band, and uh, they released uh, their album last year, Wallflower, and I, I mentioned it as one of my my favorites of 2021. Yeah, uh, their title track just, wow, it just hit me so much. It was like, because, you know, you hear people talk about, oh, like there's, you know, a couple bands that are writing songs that are addressing the pandemic, and that's going to feel like very dated in a few years. Like, yeah. But this was like the first song I had heard that kind of addresses the pandemic, but like, you know, and it uses the, the chorus keeps saying this life is a lockdown. But it didn't feel like to me that it's just addressing the pandemic specifically, but more just like the general like feeling of like being an introverted person who is feeling like, you know, everybody now is kind of stuck at home and they're afraid to go out. Right. At least this is my interpretation of it. But I, I know Tatiana had talked in interviews about how she's a very introverted person and, you know, she dealt with her own depression and demons of like, you know, meeting people, but just thinking about the, the impact the song had really about like that, that feeling of, of, um, just kind of not, not knowing what to do. Do I, do I be around people? Do I stay in like just kind of being torn? And it's interesting because, you know, she has a very sweet sounding voice when she sings and then she does the death metal thing. But to me, oh, yeah. it's like she she brings like this extra depth to it because it's like the song is about this this kind of dichotomy, right? You know, you got the feeling of of being uh, stuck in home and and just kind of want to being inside yourself, and then just like also wanting to explode. And it's like wow, just the way the way she brought that kind of depth uh, to it is is just amazing to me. And I think like that's the kind of um that's the kind of feeling that i want to bring to music too is just being able to to express you know that whatever it is that i'm feeling inside and you know how how we as a band feel how can we bring that mm -hmm. to to other people and you know get get that message out but also have something that can be uh meaningful for for a lot of people and not just for a particular moment in time but you know something that could last for for a long time right right and you know i i'll be another band that i'll have to into to explore at first and see if it's fully but that one song i don't i don't remember the name of the song was it pisces it, that's yeah, the one okay, that, that's, that, the that, one. that's the one that went viral yeah yeah, and I was like, okay, this a unique again. There's that uniqueness, you know, uh, originality about it, and um, that is, like, you know, you get those extremes. You know, you get from an extreme metal sound to, you know, if you or you get a basic. You know, you go to a either a keyboard vocal sound or a vocal guitar. You know. If you, sound you know it's like you get some the range of what's out there you can listen to it's like we have more choices i think now than ever and in just about every uh they get every professor rock fans collection you'll see a wide range of music that you know and and for me, music, different things that I listen to is based on the mood of the day, or the hour. I can change, you know, within an hour's time how I'm feeling, and I need the music to, you know, yeah, I've always said it, music keeps me sane, keeps me grounded, you know, it heals me. Do it right, you know. It's like for whatever reason, it's like put on my favorite album or listen to my favorite song. I would 
P. And uh, if it's a short song, but if it's a long song, just sit there and just close your eyes and drift away. And go, oh, those problems just away. Music. Makes you feel good. So tell stories, you know, and stories that um, others can relate to, you know, especially if you're talking about human things, subjects. Mm -hmm. Relate to human things. I was like, yeah, well, the, I, I have to admit, before the lockdown, I've, I've always. I think since the early 2000s, I've been, so it wasn't too drastic of a thing, but for some reason, how everybody else is feeling affected them. I'm feeling the side effects of that. And you know, I kind of feel the anxiety since I'm able to, I, you know, I sympathize with. I'm not a musician, but I sympathize with musicians that all of a sudden it's like you can't go out there and tour or you know play a couple you know club gigs, you know, because this thing is you know where my language it's fucking everything up. It's really fucking everything up. And it's like I <laughs> It's like I want, I want it to get back to normal so my friends out there can go about their lives, you know, their social lives, be safe in a club, you know, concert venue, movie theater, any of any place in an enclosed area, feel safe and then to enjoy the entertainment. Movie, the music, because we need that escape. I think now more than ever, we need music. Personally, I'm a I've seen uh, early days a lot of friends that caught it. With the vaccines, and it's like, and I'm like, oh, I'm scared for them, and it's like, it makes me okay. I'm gonna stay in my house more, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's funny. I I ended up catching catching it last week, and you know, I've been vaccinated and boosted, so you know, I'm I feel very lucky that my case was was very mild. The only thing I was dealing with was some mucus and some coughing, and just being kind of tired every day but like yeah I, I know people who've who've gotten sick and you know a couple of my bandmates have gotten sick at various points and we just it's uh you know i said it's it's very unpredictable right now and um we're just we're we're doing we're all doing the best we can and i think it's one thing one thing that's been really frustrating to me about this pandemic is on, on the one hand, I think it has unleashed a lot of good for, for in some ways, like I think it's encouraged a lot of technology to advance in a way that really needed to happen sooner rather than later. And that's just kind of pushed us forward more quickly. But on the other hand, like one of the things that's just frustrated me so much is, is the um, just I mentioned earlier, I felt like the world is kind of like, you know, falling apart around me. It just seems like the, um, there's just been a lot of misinformation and division everywhere. Yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. and, um, just, you know, you can, you can educate yourself and, and, um, know, like when someone's trying to lie to you, but it doesn't take away the harm of just feeling like being around 
and seeing that 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 the lie the lying that's happening everywhere is becoming acceptable and and yeah uh, yeah. yeah and it's like um it's like it's not we're in a competition no, we, we should all feel like we want to be healthy you know would be if someone purposely got AIDS, you know, or figured a way to give themselves cancer. It's like, why would you do that? Why would you want to have your body in, in you know, sick, sickness? I mean, we got enough, before this, we had enough sickness to begin with, you know, mm -hmm. cancers and, and think, you know, heart issues. Very nasty, you know. What was it? you know the anthrax scare that we had years ago, and uh, what was it? The SARS thing in Japan. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't remember when it was, but you know, it's like we had enough of that, and then the Ebola outbreak. It's like. You know, we think uh, people will get a clue. It's like, okay, we got this virus that's killing people. You know, it's like, let's take the precautions right now and, and be safe. But it seems like some people don't want to be safe. I know. It's frustrating. And I feel incredibly lucky, uh, you know, that I've been relatively uh, unaffected compared to like, I know I have musician friends who've, who were losing their livelihoods and it was really tough for them. And I think more than anything, what, what frustrated me about just the last two or three years really is feeling like, you know, on the one hand, I am very grateful that there, there are communities of, of people out there that, that genuinely, you know, people seem to care about each other, but it also kind of felt in a way like strange, like we're kind of, it's kind of every person for themselves. Like, you know, I live in Texas, I live in Austin and it's weird for me to be like where you go out to, in public and a lot of people are not wearing masks or a lot of people just like, you know, don't care about different things. And then I talk to my friends in, um, like New York, I, I know people in the progressive rock community in Australia and New Zealand, and they're telling me just like how completely different it is. And just the, the vast disparity and how people have been affected by it just feels like, you know, kind of fragmented. And it's, it's hard to kind of wrap your brain around that, that feeling of like, well, I'm, I'm over here, I'm doing okay. But then like, you know, this person over here that I know is like, doing really badly and then everybody over here is doing differently and it's just like it's yeah. hard it's hard to feel like we even have like a common experience that we can all relate to the last time i remember anything really like that sort of brought everybody together at least for a short period of time was 9 11 and that was like yeah. the, you know the defining moment for my generation i was in college when that happened but uh, you know, I think every every generation will have have its kind of struggle or its big thing. I know for the for my friends who are in their twenties right now, this pandemic is it for them. And uh, yeah, you know, I have I have faith in the younger generation, though. I think they're doing some amazing things, and oh yeah, and we really need to uh, we really need to get behind them as much as we can because they're our future. Exactly. Exactly. I mean. You know, in a way, you was we we're talking, and it brought up the thing. You know, kind of going into uh, feels like a like we're experiencing a multiverse of different universes of things. Where people are, you know, saying different things. It's like, come on, people! 
<laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I appreciate people that, that, you know, they have their own, um, when they have their own mindset, you know, because they're not affected. They don't follow, I guess what they call it. And it, to me, it's like, you know, educate yourself about things and, but always educate. You know, you're mm-hmm. not going to, you know, you're, for someone to say that they know everything, I don't believe. Hmm. I, don't, I don't believe. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, you're always learning and you got to keep an open mind. That's all you got to do. Absolutely. I remember. It's funny, I was keeping, I had like a website that I was keeping when I was in college, and I think I saved some of my my blog entries, and I look back, I looked back at them like a couple of years ago, and I was like, oh God, I thought I knew everything, because I just right. learned, I just learned about this and this, and I thought I was so cool, and I knew all the, all these things, and I'm like, the more, <laughs> the more I get older, the more I realize, like you said, it's, you got to just you got to be aware you there's a lot you don't know but also just stay curious and and stay learning about new things yeah that's that that's the uh, whenever i see something someone writes on facebook whether it's music or any other subject i like to investigate it to why that person came to and are they, you know, but it, we, when you go back to music, there are some people that are stuck with their mindset in 1970 something or 1980s, 1990s something. They never move forward from their thing. So if that happens, I know it's going to happen in other uh, places too, you know. Oh, I guess the whole thing is you always got to evolve. Yeah. Uh, learn, keep on learning, and relearning, and relearning. And it's like, just because they say the sky is blue, you know, well, sometimes it's a little weird, right? You know? So it's like, investigate. You, gotta, you know, the grass is green. Now, sometimes it's brown. You know, so it's like, you can't take things, you know, you just, what they are. You, just, you know, same with music. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's, I love exploring music. That's, that's, um, that's one of the things, that's where I haven't mentioned in years about what Prognot is. It's a progressive aspect. I like that. Yeah. So you I'm and I, out there. I'm out there. You, know? you and I got like a like a kind of a science art thing going on. You no, know, I'm I'm with the Aaron Clift experiment. You know, you're with Prognot. I, I like that though. I think uh I think science uh I think science understands that yeah, you have to keep evolving and you, you know, you're you're not just learning new things, but you're building off of what already came before you. And, and I think it's so, and that's why I'm always like talking about all these, you know, I'm always talking about bands that I grew up listening to, or, you know, stuff from the past. Um, and you know, I studied classical music and I still listen to a lot of that. And I listen to a lot of jazz, but like, for me, it's all about, um, you know, I never stopped asking why, like, why, when I hear something and I like it or I don't like it, I, I need to ask myself like, why? Okay, why did you not like this? And so some, it's interesting because sometimes when I hear a piece of music and it just like instantly like, no, I can't stand that. I, I, I force myself like, okay, why did I not like that? And uh, sometimes I'll come around on it. Like I was, uh, I posted, um, on Friday about an album that I really didn't like at first. It was uh, uh, 
I don't know if you're familiar with Adam Neely. He's a popular YouTube um, music uh, educator, commentator, bass player. He has a jazz fusion group called Sungazer. And um, I listened to their their um, album, their 2021 album, Perihelion. And um, I didn't like it at first. It just it, it irritated me in a way I couldn't explain. But then that kind of brought me on an interesting journey. And I realized what, what was bothering me about it was like Adam had done a video where he was kind of like um, analyzing his, one of his own songs and he was breaking down like the complex rhythm techniques that he was using. And like, I started listening to the album, like kind of putting on my, my music professor hat, like, okay, oh, oh, that's very interesting. Oh, does it do this? Does it do that? Like, you know, and it became like kind of an academic exercise for me. And I realized I wasn't enjoying the music. I was like too busy trying to focus in on this thing. And I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to it again, but I'm just going to listen to the sound and just, and just like take it in. Right. So I started doing that and I was like, Hey, you know, actually, I, I think this is pretty cool. And I, I like this. And now I can like appreciate what the music was trying to do rather than just like, you know, take it apart into a million pieces. Right. I've and so, several bands like that, you know, yeah. So I think it's always important. Like I always ask myself, why, why do I feel a certain way about something? Like at least, you know, and maybe my opinion doesn't change, but at least I can be like, all right, well, now I know, now I know something more about myself. Exactly. You know, and then, you know, when it comes to a band, it's like, okay, you didn't like it. Why? And, and if you try it again, you still didn't like it. It's like, at least, you know, okay, I tried it. You know, and I've said this several times on different things. Years ago, I kept on in the late 90s hearing about this uh, progressive rock band called Magma. Oh, yeah, and, I know them. I've seen them live. And, <clears throat> and so, okay, everybody that on this, um, it was a website called uh, Frog Viewers. Mm -hmm. And everybody was raving about this. I said, okay, so I ordered it. I got it. I listened. And then I stopped. Why is this not clicking with me? This is a very popular some of these other people. Why is it clicking with me? It was just because it was for me, it was just out there in a way that couldn't enjoy it. So I it, but it's like at least I tried it. Didn't like go, oh yeah, I don't like it, you know, without trying it. You know, I listened to the to Ola and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> and you know, but I appreciate musicianship and the craft went into to create that album. I don't even really remember the album, but it was very popular with the pairs. And but I, it's again, it's like I appreciate that they they have that and that people like it. You know, you know, not every band is gonna. You know, you're not gonna like every band that's out there, but if you say. I don't like them, but you never heard them. Then that's that's a that's a problem right there because yeah. now you're you're basing it on what someone else has said. Yeah, my my wife and I have very different tastes in like music and shows and stuff like that. So I'll never forget I took her to King Crimson in 2017. She's up there. I think they played Lizard, which is like a 20 minute long song in multiple sections, right? So she's listening to it. About seven minutes go by. She's like, uh, that's not really for me. I'm kind of bored. I'm going to go uh, down to the lobby. So she goes down to the lobby, gets some candy, plays a 
game on her phone for a while, comes back up maybe about 10 minutes later. And she's like, is this the same song? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's the same song. She's like, oh my God, kill me now, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love my wife. You know, it's funny, like, like where she's not really into the progressive rock thing, but she, she respects it. She understands like, you know, that it's important to me. And, exactly. um, uh, no, when we go driving around, we just, we listen to other music. So we listen to, uh, she, she has, um, you know, her collection of, of, uh, music. She's more into, um, like a lot of pop and hip hop stuff, which I enjoy a lot of that too. So, uh, no, but we've, we've found, then we find some stuff that we like listening to, but it's, uh, <laughs> we have a good laugh about this sometimes. Just, she's like, oh, yeah. she's I like, have... oh, she's like, oh, you're going to play some of that weird, weird music for me. That's what my girlfriend said. Yep. <laughs> That's what she all, she always said. I mean, there's some stuff that she, it was really interesting. We did go to, in 2009, we both went to Progressive Rock Festival in Pittsburgh. Uh, they only did two years, 2008, 2009. The name was Three Rivers. Progressive mm -hmm. Rock Festival, and she enjoyed herself. She enjoyed the atmosphere. She enjoyed a couple of the bands, and um, but for the most part, she said, oh, "Like that, <laughs> you, know, a, you know." So it's like I, 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 I keep most of the music in headphones. <laughs> I was surprised to find my wife really liked Spock's beard. Like when we saw them in. 2016 she's like i like this band they have you know that's the one thing with box beard they have a kind of a classic feel to them without mm -hmm. sound derivative of something yeah. she yeah. also really enjoyed uh rio okamoto's uh stage presence he's he, yeah, he's he is so funny uh he he's just absolutely uh absolutely a delight to watch on stage and he's an amazing musician but he's just oh, his yeah. state his stage presence is just like he, he's got so much energy and and is just he makes it fun at the beginning of their of their career he wasn't so much like that it mm -hmm. wasn't until i think after after neil left mm -hmm. you know he just he just uh blossomed in it i guess Lack of a better word, he just blossomed. That presence on stage, he kind of, in a way, some of his antics on stage remind me. One, one year, a friend of mine took me to one club in Pasadena, California, and Patrick Moraz was playing a solo piano, and in between the songs. He had these fantastical stories, and he was like, sounded like a, a nutty professor. You know, it was like mm -hmm. it was like you know, like a mad, uh, mad man. I'm like, I was, I liked his music, but I was, I was a little more involved with his, you know, his stories and the way he was so animated. So it's like it, it's, it's just amazing how the personalities. Um, musicians really come out, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some bands I've seen uh, that at that first progress, uh, a band called Citadel, 1993. I swear it was Renaissance Fair happening on stage. <laughs> that sounds it, fun. It felt like that. I mean, there's a video on, on YouTube. And a friend sent it to me the other day. He said, remember this? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, there's, but, band, there's bands like that. You just, you see them and, and you never forget them. You know, like, you know, you know their music or whatever, but then there's some, there's just something about how they, how they perform. Uh, who was it for me? Oh, uh, Devin Townsend for sure. He, oh yeah, he's, he's had the, he, yeah. But even even sometimes the more subtle stuff, like I've seen Opeth 
several times on stage and, and Michael Ackerfeld, their, their um, vocalist and leader, he's, he's got a very dry, uh, dry wit about him, but he's really funny. And, and just like, you know, you can tell how passionate he is about, about the music. He, he just finds a way to connect with the, the fans on stage. I look to, I look at performers, you know, like that. And I always look at like how, how do they connect with their fans? And I'm not trying to copy their moves or anything. I'm just like, for me, what's more important is like, you know, how do they, how do they express what, whatever it is that they, that they need to express with the music. And then I think to myself, like, okay, what is it about this particular song? Or like, you know, what do I, what, what do I want to share with people? Yeah. You know, you're taking inspiration from them mm -hmm. and, you know, and see if it, it didn't get you that, you know, inspires you enough to maybe bring something out of yourself that, you know, you'll have your own uh, presence, you know, your, where someone in the audience will be like, you know, it's like, I really am enjoying what's going on here. And it could come out at any time, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. It might even surprise yourself, you know. All of a sudden you go, that was living inside of me all these years. <laughs> yes. Um, it was like all these amazing musical stories and hours, but, you know, I really honestly wanted to say thank you for taking Going to be relatively uh, a new new friend online to me, and also a, a new band to me. And like, I feel like I'm kind of, even though I'm a little late start, still kind of going on the journey, going to be going on the journey with you. And, yeah, you know, and, and hopefully one day when all of this, whatever's going on be a thing of the past and you'll be playing at a festival somewhere and I'll be able to afford to go <laughs> yeah. to it. Um yeah, and mm -hmm. see it, witness you live. I've seen how your stage presence is on the videos, but that's nothing in comparison to live. Yeah, it's it's a lot different. We're um yeah we're hoping to get back to some live shows um maybe towards the middle of this year where our focus right now is uh, you know we have a whole album's worth of music that we've written and we're we're rehearsing these songs uh some of them are quite challenging and uh so we're getting we're getting those together we're gonna be entering the studio probably in i want to say april or may and um, hopefully releasing the album later later this year, but we've got a, a lot of activity that that we want to get into and and uh, yeah, I hope I hope that we have a chance to to meet up in person at some point and yeah, even even if it's just you know and hang out and and chat about music. I I'm really enjoy doing this and I oh, yeah. appreciate I you appreciate you inviting me and. Um, yeah, for, for anyone who has been watching online and they want to check us out, uh, Aaron Clift Experiment, the website is aaronclift.com. That's uh, A-A-R-O-N-C-L-I-F-T dot com. And we got all their music on there and and uh, you can uh, you can check that out. Yeah, I'll put, your I'll live put all the links down below. So awesome. People will yeah. go to your page and explore everything on your website, buy your CDs, important, buy your CDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, it, they're on the website. Yeah, I, I, I find it important whenever possible to buy music directly from the band, especially, uh, you know, especially bands that are in the United States mm -hmm. uh, where postage is is relatively um, reasonable uh, delivery time can be relatively reasonable, sometimes a little longer, but 
for the most part, you know, it gets it gets to the destination within. A, I haven't I haven't heard of that many horse uh, packages being lost. Mm -hmm. You know, within the at least the continental U.S. Yeah. Uh, well, we are appreciative so, of all our fans, even the ones who are, you know, in uh, in Europe and elsewhere, where where yes. it is a long a longer delivery time. You know, we we uh, we're all one big world of music here, and uh, you know, uh, great to connect with you. You too, and I, I truly appreciate it. You know, I can't, I can't wait to to do your new album and then. Gonna get the other one so I can see the evolution of of the band. I think that's that's an important thing is is to get into a new band. You try to get get from the, the beginning so you can feel the evolution. Even though you're like me, I'm ten years behind. You know, I'll I'll catch up and I'll be I'll be I'll be ready for the for the new one. That sounds great. Yeah, you'll. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it very much. All right. Well, uh, again, thank you, Aaron. I really, truly appreciate you taking the time out of your Sunday. Thank you so much. You take care. All right, you too. I'll talk soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.